Hi caregivers, today's video is on gym memberships. As always, the information should not be used as a substitute for advice from appropriate qualified licensed practitioners of medicine, psychology, ADA, law, or financial planning. On the expanded disability index, today's topic is a level two, which is minimal disability. So the reason why I chose this topic for gym memberships was because we were using physical therapy and it was real evident that a lot of the same equipment that the physical therapists were using were available in gyms. So you're only allowed to have so many sessions for the physical therapy, especially if you're not progressing, like getting better. Um, if your disease is progressing, then they give you a, you know, a, a few different training sessions and then they basically leave you to your own uh, devices to get, get better. So, um, and continue with those exercises. So, um, one of the things that you want to look at is just if you have gyms in the area that are ADA compliant. So for the resources on this video, it's important to consult medical professionals, trainers, and gym management. As always, I'll leave the references on the website listed in the comments, which is yorkshirepartners.com. So the pros of using a gym membership is obviously you have, you know, it's space saving, there's handicapped showers. A lot of times you'll have a pool available uh, so you can do the walking exercises or different exercises that um, help with pool therapy. You might have trainers, you might have your PT, um, your physical therapist actually there at the gym setting. A lot of them have saunas. Uh, it helps with your routine, keeping a routine. And then it's a nice escape. Uh, they offer different classes and you'll have a more of a social atmosphere, um, not only for the person that you're caring for, but also as a caretaker. Um, if you have a family membership, it's, it's nice to use that. And there's a nice variety of equipment. Uh, the downside of the gyms are that there are monthly fees. Uh, you have to kind of tag in the, the time to get there, the getting in and out. Um, obviously, you're going to be dealing with more crowds, more germs. Um, the one thing I had a, kind of an issue with was uh, packing and unpacking. It was just a lot when you're trying to take somebody that's disabled to and from the gym. You have to get all of their clothes, get them to the shower, um, and it was a better part of a day doing that. Uh, and then obviously you have to have like the right outfit, make sure your hair is done, um, which, you know, if sometimes that's, that's easier for some of us than others. Um, there's a lack of privacy, there's can be distraction, and then you're also on public Wi-Fi. So the reason why I encourage you to look at gym memberships, even though you might not have been a member earlier before the disability is just to understand what type of equipment is out there, understand when you are doing the physical therapy, what exercises work, what types of equipment work for you, and then be able to incorporate that um, in a home gym as your disease or the person's disease progresses. Um, it's really, really important to get exercise no matter what. It's really good for your mental state. Um, I did a video on displaced anger, and one of the things is when you feel that energy building up, um, instead of taking it out on a ne in a negative way, if you can go and work out and have a positive release, it's much better for your body. So with that, uh, there's a quote from John Wooden, who's a basketball player and coach, and he says that things work out best for those who make the best of how things work out. And that's sort of the mantra for exercise. Um, in a situation where you do feel like you're kind of trapped and that maybe your physical um, state is, is changing. So with the Plan Do Check Act in the planning stage, just I encourage you to look at different gym offerings, determine if there's insurance discounts or what will work best. Again, talk to your medical provider and then also find out if there's physical therapy that can be incorporated with your exercise routine. Um, do try out a gym to determine what works out the best for you and what doesn't, um, even if it's on a trial basis. And then also this will help determine what types of equipment that you would want uh, to put in a home gym if you go that route. Um, check to see which equipment um, works for your disability and then also look at planning long term. So if you do buy a couple good pieces of gym equipment, you want to make sure that it's going to be able to transition with you, um, you know, for the duration. And then lastly, act. Um, it, so adjust your membership or using the gym as you need for each stage of decline. 
So in conclusion, uh, just to wrap up with a quote from Winston Churchill, uh, success is walking from one failure to another failure with no loss of enthusiasm. So I hope that helps. Um, I just want to thank you very much for tuning in. Take care and please subscribe for future videos.